Calories in versus calories out equals your body weight. False. Well, it is partially true, but there are so many other factors that I wanna talk about today that can contribute and influence how we look and how much we weigh. So let's talk about it. humans welcome back to our channel Inc nutrition where we are all about mind body and food my name is Jack I'm a registered dietitian and I am here to help translate the science of nutrition so that you can live a happier and healthier life please like comment and subscribe for videos every week thanks so much so back in the day I was taught as maybe some of you were as well that 3500 calories equals one pound so if you systematically reduce your calorie intake by 500 every day that should equate to one pound of weight loss like clockwork every week well we now know that that is pretty ridiculous and our bodies aren't always working just like that there's a lot of other factors at play here and hey i know that there are laws to physiology and that if you are in a deficit right with calories and there's a good chance you may lose some weight but it goes way way beyond that so I first want to talk about modifiable factors these are things these are variables that we can actually control in our life so first up we have food quality so just as I said food quantity is important it's part of the equation so is food quality, right? So there's like the same amount of calories in one egg as there are in one slice of white bread. But those calories are completely different in terms of how they are metabolized, okay? And over time, if you were to really have a lot of refined carbohydrates, AKA that white bread, that can lead to insulin resistance, which is strongly associated with weight gain. Also, if over time you are just not having enough variety of fresh minimally processed whole foods you run the risk of becoming deficient in certain nutrients nutrients that do play a role with our weight that help turn food into energy and play a big role with our energy metabolism and fat metabolism and highly processed foods as we are seeing now can contain what we call endocrine disruptors so there are certain compounds that actually affect our hormone secretion and as you will hear from me a lot in the coming minute uh, hormones play a massive role with our weight now I do recognize that access to high quality fresh food is not the same for everyone so if you are able to include more fresh whole foods I would recommend it because it will make a difference next up we have food behavior yes our behavior can also play a big role with our weight right so skipping meals irregular eating patterns skipping breakfast that is associated with obesity not saying it causes it but there is a strong correlation there also chronic dieting okay that causes a lot of havoc in our system and in our metabolism and it really can slow it down because restricting too much can put you a bit in this preservation mode okay where you start holding on to calories in a different way you're less efficient at using calories all things that can influence our weight next we have sleep right so chronic low sleep poor sleep hygiene can disrupt hormones that control our appetite and our hunger like leptin and ghrelin so that will play a role with how much we weigh at the end of the day and then there is stress too so as probably many of you know stress over time can affect our health in many 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 ways including our body weight because it does play a role with other hormones just like sleep does um, particular cortisol okay so sleep and stress I mean those are you know foundational things to always try to keep in check and I know it's easier said than done to just say be less stressed sleep better but I'm just I'm just here to inform you right that these are factors that can lead to different weight outside of just calories in versus calories out now of course we have to talk about exercise right so exercise does increase energy expenditure you do burn more calories the more you exercise which is part of the equation it will also allow you to be more efficient at burning calories so that can be helpful and I do think a variety of types of activity types of intensities can be beneficial at the end of the day just try to find a ways that you know you can be consistent with moving your body and I'll leave you with this quote 
To become a regular exerciser over a long period of time, you must learn to love moving your body. If it is a chore for you to go to the gym, you're probably not gonna be able to maintain that. So find something that you just love to do that also allows you to get the heart rate up, sweat a little bit, okay? That is the key to being consistent with exercise. Another factor that can influence our weight that maybe not a lot of us think about is our gut health. So microbial diversity, you know, all those beneficial bacteria in our gut and other areas in our body, they produce metabolites, right? These bioactive compounds, which can optimize nutrients, storage, insulin, activity, inflammation, and hormone function, leading to the regulation of appetite and our body weight. If I were to make some just blanket recommendations that can help you like starting right now, improve your gut health, first and foremost, it's having a variety of whole foods, okay? Both plant-based and animal-based foods. And then it's also about including some probiotic, prebiotic ingredients, live active cultures, fiber, all these things together can improve microbial diversity. So all of those that I just talked about are modifiable factors, things that we actually can't control, but there are some things that are out of our control, non-modifiable factors, such as age. We know that, for example, going through menopause can have a big impact on our weight because it, our hormones are a bit out of balance there. Also, as we age, our bone mass, our muscle mass, those naturally go down, which can affect our metabolism. And speaking of metabolism, I do feel like that is something that a lot of people like to blame for why they are gaining some weight, right? Oh, I older, my metabolic rate is just lower, and there is some truth to that, right? Our resting metabolism does slow down a little bit as we get older, but it's probably not as much as you think. Ethnicity, that, right, is a factor that you can't control, and black, Native American, Hispanic populations, on average, do have higher BMIs, and that is related to a combination of factors, right? Culture, physiology, behavior, and then the last non-modifiable factor is the biggest one, right? And that is genetics, okay? So there are over 400 genes so far that we know about that have been determined to play a pretty big role with our body weight. These are genes that affect how we use carbohydrates, how we store fat. Now, no one knows for sure precisely right, how much genetics plays a role, but if you look at the research, you're gonna see anywhere from 25 to 80% of our weight that is determined by our genes. I know that's a huge spectrum there, and it's probably somewhere in the middle, right? How about half of our weight is determined by our genetics, right? So that can be a positive or a negative thing, but at the end of the day, we all have different body types, and you can be extremely healthy no matter how you look, right? Health does exist at every size, I can assure you that. Now, I do quickly wanna introduce you to a new emerging topic in the world of nutrition science, which is nutrigenomics, which tells us and helps us understand how what we eat affects how our genes are expressed. So there are some things that you can change. And if you want me to dive into that in a deeper way, let me know. I can make a whole video on that. So I guess with genes and genetics, you can sometimes change them, which does lead me to their final category, which is sometimes modifiable. These are factors such as the environment. So we've known for some time that there are certain toxins and chemicals that when you're exposed to over time can be carcinogenic, but we are also discovering this whole new category of compounds called obesogens. Okay, these are compounds, chemicals that are around us all over the place that can contribute to weight gain, that can contribute to the accumulation of fat. This is a very real thing. These are substances that can be found in plastics, pesticides, packaging, paints, even nonstick cookware. So with that one, if you use a nonstick pan at a really, really high heat and you're causing it to smoke, that can release certain chemicals that have been associated with weight gain. So this is a really fascinating area and we're still learning a lot and I don't wanna scare anyone because there's only so much we can control there, I get it. But we're gonna know a lot more in the coming years about all of these environmental compounds and how they can really actually affect the way we look. 
Next up we have medications. So things like corticosteroids, hypoglycemic agents, mood stabilizers, antidepressants, beta blockers. These are all classifications of meds that can increase appetite, can also mess with hormones, um, can slow down our metabolism as well. And then finally we have certain medical conditions that can play a big role with our weight, including hypothyroidism, PCOS, any disease that affects insulin resistance, Prader-Willi syndrome, Cushing syndrome, sleep disorders, anxiety and depression. These are all conditions, some more controllable than others, that really can affect our weight. So as you can see, there is so much out there that can affect how we look outside of calories in versus calories out, outside of food and exercise. And when it comes to the mechanisms of action, right? Why exactly or how all of these things uh, do affect our weight, you can see, right, there was an overlap of a lot of areas. One, first and foremost, was our endocrine system. Things can actually disrupt hormone secretion. Number two would be inflammation. So that can be an underlying factor, low grade chronic inflammation. And then we have metabolism, okay? So things that can actually slow our resting metabolic rate. So we're not actually burning as many calories internally, which can of course lead to weight gain. And then finally we have gene expression. So certain things can turn on and off genes or sometimes you can't control those things. So in one way or the other, right, these are probably the four biggest things that can affect our weight. Now, I really hope that this video was more encouraging than discouraging. I just want people to be informed. I want people to understand that health, nutrition, your weight is not black and white, okay? And systematically reducing your calories by 500 a day will not systematically lead to weight loss all the time. It is much more involved than that. Our bodies are complex and there's just a lot going on. So if you are struggling with weight loss, reach out, you know, we can talk, we can try to make a personalized plan to help you achieve your goals uh, in a sustainable, healthy, safe, right way. So thank you so much for watching. If you want me to talk about anything else in the world, the field of food and nutrition, let me know, drop it in the comments. My name is Jack, again, I'm with Inc. Nutrition. We have a fantastic team of dietitians and we're here to help, okay? So please everybody have a super delicious day and I'll see you next time. Peace. Science of nutrition. Nu <laughs> nutrition. Next we have sleep, right? So chronic low s <laughs> AKA it which does lead me to this last category. Cate cate category. <laughs> now I do really want to be carcinogenic, but we're now fine fine flying out.